did the Mighty series because I was reading Camila a, a Bible story and it was terrible. The images were fantastic, but the emphasis of scriptures were, it was terrible. And in fact, one of the stories, it was about Noah, it said that Noah was scared. And I went back and there was nothing about Noah's fear on the pages of the scripture. So I said, we got to do something about this. And the Holy Spirit quickened me and said, you should do something about it. And so we just ran with the vision. I want to empower our children to grow up in the truth, not have it be something that's watered down or politically correct because we've seen the, the progression of having to be politically correct with our children and, and I, I want that to stop with our generation so that we can empower them to grow in the things of the Lord, to build their trust and confidence in the Word of God and that's what I want to do with the Bible characters that are powerful. They're, they're like ones that we should be looking upon to someone that was um, obedient to the Word of God and all of those things are master keys to bringing up godly men and women so we have to take the initiative to do it and to read these books to our children and they're gonna get it they're gonna their spirits are gonna get it they're gonna get it and then they have something to look back on that is a driving force for their spirituality and their growth with God I start Alexa, play Revival Today Radio. You are now listening to Revival Today Radio. Give Jesus a great big hand clap all over the auditorium. And God will do two things tonight. That demon that's assigned to your life, he'll pick him up and throw him out of here. And then he'll minister his power to your body. I came to get this message to the people. And no devil in hell is going to stop me. stand up straight with your shoulders back and have a clean look in your eye the fire of God down in your spirit and he sees that you know who you are the devil will back off for free I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ every demon spirit assigned to your life it backs off for free today in the name of Jesus Christ Good morning. Seriously, with the corny like transition, what was that? Do that again. Oh, do it again. Oh, wow. Can we get some '90s music up in here? Let's do the, the like the PowerPoint swooshes. Remember that? Oh, wow, it's colorful today. Ooh. Yeah, we. I yeah. saw Jonathan showed me. Hilarious. That was so funny. Check the news last night was so funny. Like so funny. I recommend you watch. I'm itchy right there. There's a like a tag or something. I don't know. Guys, it's a beautiful day. It is. Thank God. They said it was gonna rain all week. Right. I reject that. I reject yeah. that too. I want there to be sun. I want there to be sun in 80 degree weather. Mm. 
So anyway, um, I just want to show you guys something real quick just to brighten up your mornings. I know it's already afternoon, but I don't know. Just I just want you to look at this and smile and know that the Lord loves you and the Lord loves me. That's why I received this why? picture this morning. So just huh? Just watch. Better? Just look at this. Testing. Look at that. Oh, my Lanta. Keep it up. <laughs> my pupils are turning into hearts. <laughs> Wowie. <laughs> Yo, but he's got that finger off the trigger. That's what y'all don't play with, Nick. Y'all didn't know that. That's it. That's trigger safety 101 right there. He is the embodiment of, of, of trigger safety. Wow. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Okay. You no, know, he has kingly hair follicles. I'm going to tell you what. He does. <laughs> he always he does. has. You know, those are some strong genes. Mm -hmm. Look at him protecting his ear. That's it. Ears. That eye, eye protection as well. Yep. Very integral. Eye uh -huh. protection, ear protection. You protect it or you lose it, y'all. He's got a... Is that a belt of some sort? Like it's a it's a the the holster. The holster. Yeah. That's pretty much the size of his forearm. <laughs> He's mad cute. Also, peep the chain. Dog tags. Yeah. Is that a dog tag with the American flag on it? We're just gonna go. I can't. With I wish I could okay. zoom in. I wish I could zoom in. Oh wait, I can because it's on my phone. Hold on. That's, I should put this as a my wallpaper. Nick. That's Nick. Yeah, if you guys don't know, I just want you guys to just just look at that. Listen, we've been getting a lot of No, that's um, just a straight up emails. Dog We're tag. We're going to have to start scheduling these things dog out tag. on uh, Skype. I know. For testimony. Testimony Tuesday or Somebody testimony sends Thursday. Somebody testimonies and they're crazy. Mm -hmm. Mad crazy. And if you guys have a testimony, oh, I yeah, want to hear about it. shorts. Thank you, I want to hear about Let's it. Let's... <laughs> Oh, oh my land! Oh, he's got a, a bougie T-shirt. He's always been bougie. He has always been the bougie. North Face. That that T-shirt right there is probably fifty-eight bucks. I will. I will tell you what. How old are you in that picture? Back. Eight. The, this was before North Face was a thing. He, Nick knew about it. Nick knew about it, and he has personalized dog tags. <laughs> but and cargo shorts. That's all you need to know about Nick. Totally. Nick is, he's always had the spirit of excellence <sighs> always and he gets it from his mother and his dad mm -hmm. it's a fact there i said it so thank your lucky stars nick wherever you're at where is nick I don't know. who cares He's taking the tent down. uh anywho i also have i just want to encourage <clears throat> all of you parents out there because we're still doing this homeschool thing <laughs> sorry let me just <laughs> we still doing it we still doing this homeschool thing. Can't you can't you like break for summer early? Cause Yo, no. No, every day there's scheduled work. Every day there's a Zoom call. Monday through Friday uh through Thursday. Dude, nobody's banking like Zoom. I'll tell you what. It's true. That would have been a good stock to get in, into in, in like But anyway, um for all of the people that are watching and you still have children, I know you do. Um you're you're still um having to teach them every single day. I want to encourage you and also bring another smile to your face with this cute little video from the Farina family over and uh, outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, because this little girl captured my heart. And again, the emphasis of in this time of lockup, of lockdown, um, I want you to make sure that you are instilling the word of God to your children. Let's play that video, and you're welcome. Oh, there you go. Free boy, shot the vinegar, and shot the vinegar. There's me, shot, we shot the vinegar. When you hear the music, you're the bow down, because they stood up. Well, who, who told them that they had to bow down? King of the Yeah, and how, what does Gigi call him? King what? King Epster, Epster. King Epster, Epster. And what did he say to shot the Bendigo? King Epster, When you hear the music, you're the bad But they stood up. They stood up? Yeah. Oh, boy. And then what happened? Uh, and Go. King Epster, Epster got so mad. He got so mad. And what happened? And King Epster. 
Yeah. <laughs> and what did he say? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, he said, I'll give you one more chance to bow down. But, can, but they stood up. They stood up? Yeah. And King okay. Epster got so mad. My dear phone, Sam came to my dear phone. Wait a minute, Sam can't do it. Bad my dear friend. And I see a fourth man, and it looks like God. That's right. There was a fourth man in the fire, and he looked like God. That's oh right. God. See, he had to translate that because you went and I got that. But. They didn't even they smell didn't like, even smoke. like smoke. Come on, oh somebody. She's anointed. <laughs> she d d didn't smell like smoke. Wow. God saved them, right? Yeah, we should take great shots of Ben who, who? So, who was in the middle of the fire with the three boys? Who was there? A God. God was with them. That's right. Okay, somebody mail her a car. If you don't. <laughs> Telling you, that girl yeah. could barely okay. speak. I, I'm in love. And she, she gave that that whole story. Her eyes are look at them. Brilliant. So little. Brilliant. Right though, is that not phenomenal? We need to mail her a car. Y'all, that should encourage somebody. I mean, she, she, I, she. We needed the translation from. <laughs> But from Brother JD. So but you could, I mean, they didn't even smell like smoke, she was saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I literally, that is what it's all about. Okay. So be encouraged, y'all. You think it's not coming in? It's coming in. And she could actually recite it <laughs> word for what word. What happened? Girl. God bless her. She's very anointed. Yes, she really is. Gigi. Oh, my gosh. What did she call Nebuchadnezzar? Um, what, Nebuchadnezzar? <laughs> what was it dang it i forgot it's cute it's cute so listen to that that's just a reminder for everybody to get your act together and start sharing the gospel with your children hey do you want to be on our testimony hour then email us at info at revival today .com and share your testimony and you might get selected for a sweet little skype call uh, <laughs> <Mid -addy. laughs> it's just funny her husband was mopping the floors <laughs> So info at revivaltoday.com and share with us your testimony because we are going to start Skyping some people um, just out of ease, I think, uh, so that they can share their testimony. Isn't that exciting? Yay. Oh, wow. We couldn't even introduce you. But today <laughs> today oh, we have a very special it, guest. Why is it so far off? That is, I don't know. I don't I know, like yeah. a lot of space here. Um, that's actually six feet between the both of you. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, you're right. We're just <laughs> missing, missing, so. Yeah. Uh, we have a, sp a special guest, and his name is Brennan um, De Barrios. I'm just kidding. What? R Rivera. Brennan Quinones. Reyes. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> something it Spanish. Come to me. It was it's mad something Spanish. Spanish. You think, I'm terrible with names, but um, for whatever reason, Reyes and Rivers or De Barrios might as well be the same no. last name. No. I think Reyes means kings. Yeah. Rios means rivers. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what, Brennan? That's all I, that's that's I, don't, I don't know why. Basically much. the same. De Barrios? <laughs> De Barrios, that's Italian. For whatever reason, I thought that that was your last name, but I just... Or un barrio. What's a barrio? Like a, a village. Barrio boys. Oh, the barrio. Oh, the barrio. Oh. Nobody can sing a, a single song from the Barrio Boys. Yes, I can. Hold on. No, you can't remember. It says Sesame Street. They're from the Barrio. That's right. Yeah. But do you remember the Barrio Boys? I do. I remember them. I can I sing it to you right now. It's before your time. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't remember a single Barrio Boys song. But that's yes, I can. Yes, I can. They were with Selena. Thank you for watching from Sydney, Australia and South Africa. We're going to get right into this. Brennan, a phenomenal shirt from, from Stephanie Beck. Oh. No, no, we will get shot. I Thanks. will not. I'm not listening. Okay. Oh. Are you done?
Nope. I cannot sing one. <laughs> Song of the I knew that voice. they existed, but that's basically it. I, I can't don't know sing. any of their songs. No, you know what? They did. They done did a song with Selena. See, Drea just said the same thing. She was like, "I remember them just only because of Selena." Only because of Selena. I remember when I was when Selena died and I cried. It was probably like in the fifth grade. It was a sad day. What year was that? <laughs> Before your time. Ninety six. Ninety six. Wow. Yeah. Ninety six. Wow. Yo, I don't remember one lyric. It's okay. I don't, I remember him. I remember singing this song. You know what we kid. remember? The word of God. Amen. That's what mm. we're going to be. Mm. We're going to. Because that's what we're going to emphasize today, <laughs> ladies and gents. So uh, without further ado, we are going to um, just have you go for it. Like, what's good? What happened? How's your life? How did you get saved? I find it very interesting that there's been a common thread amongst everyone here at Revival today, other than the fact that they're all misfits. Um, <laughs> we yeah. have all come to an aha moment at the age of 15. Your age. When, were, when did you get saved? Um, or was it like, I've always been a Christian. Mm -hmm. But when did I think, you get serious? I think he's going to say that. I got serious. I got serious when Elena and I went to RBI. That's when I got like really serious. Yeah. Um, Tell me about your background. Yeah, so let's just start it from, from the, start, start the yeah, beginning. Start from the beginning. Yeah, so I was born um, to a single mom. Uh, my mom was 15 when she was pregnant with me, um, had me at 16. Yeah, and teen mom. Yeah, Woo. teen mom. Uh, and I, so I grew up with her and my grandmother for the first, like, four years of my life. Uh, my biological dad, like, I, like, saw him on the weekends mm -hmm. but after a couple of years like he my mom was just like hey do you want to sign off rights because she just they didn't get along very well and there was like they were there was like a very like abusive relationship yeah and uh i don't know like all the details but i, I do know that and my mom said hey do you want to sign off rights and he did so for a couple of years i was a bastard <laughs> I, I, I didn't I didn't have a dad um and then my mom began dating my uh my dad who adopted me um they got married in like 2002 and then he adopted me so nice. yeah I'm adopted that's pretty cool oh, yeah I get it we've all yeah. been adopted adopted into the family of, of God. amen um okay my God, refrain from talking guys. okay Free from all refrain Lord. refrain from from we talking have been grafted into the vine uh, Brandon please continue yeah, so I didn't grow he up. He is the vine. We are the branches. <laughs> there is power yeah. in adoption. Go ahead. Just yeah, I I didn't grow up like going to church when I was like when my mom when I was living with my grandma and my mom, but once my mom and my adopted dad, uh, John, you guys know, mm -hmm. uh, they they just felt like they should like they just felt like they had to get their life right. Like they just they were young, but they just. They knew like they had to. Uh, they knew there was something like they had to do. You know, they grew up like in a, in Christian homes themselves, but like they wanted to get me and me and my sister in into church. So they did, and we went to an Assembly of God church, is where we ended ended up like settling. And from there, uh, they that's when they like got introduced to like the Holy Spirit. They you know they got saved like shortly after we started attending. And I was about like seven or eight when I was in children's church and, um, our pastor's wife, she, she led us through the salvation prayer. And on that same day, um, she asked if we wanted to be filled with the Holy spirit and speak in tongues. And that's, um, like, I forget what the exact year was, but I was like seven or eight and that's, and I spoke in tongue. I got saved and spoke in tongues when I was, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah, that was really cool. And I, I found out that that same day, I, th I believe my dad was also baptized in the Holy Spirit that same day. Wow. So he was upstairs in like regular church and I was in children's church. Wow. So that was really cool. Awesome. And uh, my parents like, they, they want, they like were hungry for the Lord. And then I don't know what happened, but they just like, they lost like that passion. Mm -hmm. They, they didn't like stay completely on fire and they like, you know, they, they just didn't get rid of like old friends. So they would still go out and like, they would, you know, go out with friends and they wouldn't like get like hammered 
like you know like you would when you were like in your early 20s but they would just still go out so there was a while there where we just were in a felt like nominal christians we just went just attended and because of that i mean i didn't i wasn't really getting like my word because of that and and let me just tell you that's really frustrating for yeah to be because when yeah. you are serving christ yeah you're calling yourself a right. christian but then you're not fully committed then you are one of those people that um just neglects the power or or what's the scripture you uh something about the word but that you reject the power of it so it's like you never want to reject the power mm -hmm. so it's like there's no worse life as a christian than sitting going to church and then having absolutely no power what a frustrating life so many of us have been through yeah. that and i know like just from like being a kid i remember seeing like my parents I remember seeing like ob like it was obvious that like there was a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they I think they were close to getting divorced, you know, mm -hmm. once or twice because, you know, I mean, when you're out just doing the wrong things and you don't have like the Lord as your center and you're not, you know, yeah. actively seeking and you're not hungry. That's it's just obvious. That's you know, that's what was going on. So um, early like what was it? probably the early 2010s um, is when they started like getting back on fire for the Lord. Um, our church had like a, a falling out, like the one pastor, he, um, he had an affair. So like that, like split up the church and that's, and I think that was also part, excuse me, part of the reason why, um, why they, they like stopped like serving the Lord as much. I mean that, yeah, that, that'll that, I mean, that'll do, that'll put a bad taste in that'll your do it. But um, yeah, early 2010s, my parents got into like youth ministry. Mm -hmm. and uh, they were, like, camp counselors at a, at a Christian camp that was near, like, Williamsport, where I grew up, and uh, they, I don't know, I don't know, honestly, know what, what sparked it, but they just, they just, like, were hungry for the Lord again, and they just started seeing the Holy Spirit move at, at a camp, and then 2013 rolled around, they got to be the camp leaders, and after that, um, after that year, um, in 2013, like there was like a massive revival at, at camp, like kids, like the altars were packed. Kids were like, what, kind of, what, what was it called? It was just called Hughesville camp. Okay. Um, yeah. And pe like the altars were packed. Kids were giving their life to the Lord. People were getting healed and, and delivered from like, like eating disorders and people, it was, it was wow. crazy. It was insane. And because of that, um, it wasn't like a Pentecostal mm -hmm. uh, camp and the, the board of directors really didn't like that. <laughs> <Of course> <laughs> they, um, they really didn't like it. And they, they basically like ostracized my parents and they, they're no longer like involved with that. They like basically kicked them out because they just said like, this is not what we're, what we're about sure. without, without saying <laughs> it, right. Know? Right. So that, you know, that propelled my parents into wanting to do, you know, more youth ministry outside of just like a summer camp. And uh, from 2013 on, um, 2013 is actually, oh, I know what started it. Um, in 2013, Pendel Youth Convention. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, John was at, John was at uh, youth convention, and that's what really fired him up. Fired Your parents? Up. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because they were the youth leaders at the time that took us there. Okay, that so makes that, sense. So that, like, really sparked a fire in them to want to, like, do that. And I remember, I think we got one CD from the table. It was like uh, Dominion over like devils and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was Red really one. cool. Um, I probably sold that to you. Huh? I probably sold that to him. Probably. You probably did. Yeah. yeah. I remember like listening to it in the car with my dad, like early to early 2010s. So yeah, that like really, that really sparked him up. I remember like when John came out, I was like, why is this guy yelling? I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and if you like went to, um, like Pendel, if you grew up going to any like AG youth conference, it's usually like this like really nerdy guy right. that comes out and says like, really like hey, like, hey guy, he goes like hey, uh, really I'm, difficult I'm, out there, I'm, but I'm, I'm I'm for you. He goes, I'm like from like I'm from Tulsa, you know, you know I'm like, you know I I have, I have a family, three kids and a dog. Like I don't I don't really don't care about your family, <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
If it's anything like the one yeah. that we used to go to back when we were growing up, we would go there for the band. Yeah, the oh, music. The, band, the yeah, bands were always fire. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. just always the music. fire. And then it was just like the message. That, like, the, the message would be like the time where okay. you would pass notes. Yeah. And yeah. It was so buddy. corny. Like, and they would always have like uh, powerpoints. And powerpoints are <laughs> so <laughs> stupid. Yeah, yeah. And like, all I know is this guy and John comes out just screaming. And I said, I don't know what I. I, was like, I, just, I like this guy. I like it. I like uh, when he yells you know, at me. <clears throat> and. uh I just I thought that was like amazing, uh, and so yeah. 20 that is interesting. Yeah, you know. Okay, I'd so it was you. You were there. Yeah. And then Elena was there. Did Elena talk about that or what? Who else was? Yeah. Said something about that pen. Yeah. Camp? Elena, Elena was, was there. Elena. And Nick was there. Yeah. Nick and Nick. Yeah. That was the other. Yeah, one. we all grew up AG kids. I, I remember talking crazy. to Nick, and we have like similar experiences, like with church, like. AG churches have the same kind of people in every church. Yeah. Doesn't matter where you go. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So. My AG church was cray cray. Yeah. I have some stories that will blow your mind. Nobody would have ever believed them. Never. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I bet you guys wanted me to go into that story. I know. Not. Yeah. There's like a ton of stories. Anyway, go yeah. ahead. So. Yeah. So, I mean, when you catch like, when you catch revival and you, and you like start getting on fire for the Lord, like you gotta like you know keep it stoked. And my parents were like, you know, there's like this like season when you first get saved, when it's like you know you just feel so on fire for the Lord, but like it's so important to get like the Word in you, so that you're it's not all spirit, right? So you don't get all because like when you're all spirit, you get flaky, but and then when you get that. all, yeah. oh, no, sorry, <laughs> sorry. So you gotta you gotta yeah. find the balance, okay? Yeah, because you gotta. You gotta. And if you get too much word, you just get like super like legalistic and you get like <laughs> and, and you get like so like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's know, just like you get stale a little bit. It's yeah. just like there's no yeah. life. Yeah. So like my, you know, my parents like did their, you know, did their best getting on fire and on fire for the Lord. And, you know, unfortunately, like for me, I just, you know, I wanted to like love the Lord like I did, you know, and I just kind of like went through the motions like. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it was like I would go to church, you know, lift my hands and worship, you know, you know, you feel the Lord. But like it just like ended there. You know, my parents didn't really um, they didn't instill like, hey, we're going to sit down and read the word together. You know, they encouraged like me and my sisters like, hey, get a devotional, you know, do this. But like it was they were never like super strict about it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's, you know, my fault that I didn't do it. But like I just didn't have that like, hey, we're going to sit like this intentional, like right. we're going to do this. So that, you know, that was to my, you know, is to my like detriment in a way. And I, I was just kind of wishy-washy all through, you know, even all through high school. It just, you know, I just didn't like pursue God the way like I have been since, you know, I got married and Elaine and I have, you know, graduated from RBI. It's just, it was different, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I remember, you know, Elaine and I dating, and then my parents went into youth ministry, and then that's when we began um, doing, leading worship. I just remember... Um, so what made you, like, go into the ministry? Like, all of a sudden, you were just like, I'm kind of lukewarm. Hey, let's go to the ministry. I just, oh, so that's <laughs> funny. Like, going back to, like, going back to, like, the all super spiritual thing, like, mm -hmm. after my parents got on fire, they just wanted to, they wanted anything that was, like, you know, like just Pentecost, anything that would just like feed them. Yeah. So it got, I, you know, this is my personal opinion, but I just feel like my parents got connected with some kooky, charismatic people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, I just had like, we would go to like these meetings, um, like house meetings and like these weird church meetings. And it was like, it was very weird for me. And that also like turned me off to like, sure. that turned me off to like wanting to like serve the Lord like that. Because I saw him like, these churches are so rinky dink. They're poor. Half of them are on welfare. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like, why would I want anything to do with that? Come on. So it was, and like people would like prophesy over me that I was a preacher and, and, and I was like, what? Okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I'm like, I, but I always had this thing. Like I knew that I knew that there was a God. I knew that like, you know, I knew that like he had a plan for me. I always knew like that, you know, that, uh, that verse that, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11, that he has a, he has a plan to prosper you. I mean, how, I mean, I always thought that simply because, I mean, I beat the odds like with my mom like having me and like and growing up not in like not on welfare and not yeah. on so like I, I always knew that like God had a plan for me. I always knew that, you know, I, I was destined for something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. But I, I just 
I just lacked like that that fire to like keep going. And but I but people were kept saying like stuff about ministry. I'm like, okay, like there's got to be something to it. If like even, as crazy as some of these people are, like there's got to be something for people to, you know, keep saying like the same similar thing over yeah, and over. Right. Um, and you know, because they were saying like, oh, you're supposed to be a minister. Like I just because I was so naive. Like I thought like I was supposed to be in like the fivefold ministry for like years. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought I was supposed to be preaching. I thought that was like only like the only way to like be in ministry. Hmm. So. Oh um, my gosh! Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Because I hope yeah. I hope people are getting this. This is so so important. Ta, 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 ta. Yeah. Are you feeling a draw to the ministry? Uh, there's there's. Um, there's certain callings, right? And I think that there's a lot of times that people, they so much love the Lord and they yeah. so much want to give back to him and his kingdom that they kind of get a little bit confused with the calling. Sure. I, I want to be very, very gentle here. I know what you're very saying. Gentle. Like, I know what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And feel free, honestly, like, and I feel like I'm breezing by it, like <laughs> a lot of stuff, like, like stop me if you guys have any questions. But this is very integral because, um, you know, ministry, first of all, doesn't even look anything like it used to. I yeah. mean, even hello, five years ago. And now we're looking at a different element of ministry, just doing streaming and that kind of yeah. thing. I mean, ministry is revolutionizing literally every single day. It's right. not looking like what it used to look like. So you can impact more people. In fact, I was watching Oya Depo. And he was saying that because of the quarantine in Africa, no less than one million people watch his broadcasts when he goes live. Wow. That's insanity. Yeah, that's crazy. So, <clears throat> you know, you can do more and you can actually reach more people, you know, online than anywhere else. I mean, you can't have a stadium full of a million people. So anyway, so what I'm saying is that it's ever moving and it's shifting and it's looking so different so um, maybe this pull to ministry is something more than just, you know, uh, yes, there's the, the evangelist, the preacher, the teacher, yada, yada. Right. But then there's also helps, which is right. just as ministry as any of those. Admin, I'll pull up the scripture and stuff to have it prepared. But sure. um, go ahead. So you're, you're going into Bible school. You feel like you have this pull because you've been given these prophetic words that you're a preacher. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So, yeah, we go to buy like get married. We go to Bible school like right after we get married, and we well because Elena and I had been doing worship for a youth group. Um, we just we we just felt like okay, let's go to RSW just because you know the school of worship because we've we've been leading worship and you know I I taught myself how to play guitar and you know I felt like you know we were semi good at it right you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know so that we did that for for a year and then and then we just felt you know after like praying and and just like realizing like the stuff we were missing out on that that the bible school classes were getting we we decided like hey let's do rbi for the last year so we did a, a whole year of rsw oh no a year and a half of rsw in our last half of RBI. So we got a bunch of Bible classes um, at the very end. So just because we just felt like we were missing out on so much and we felt like there, <coughs> we just felt like there was so much more, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, we end up graduating and then um, that, uh, what was it? That spring, right before graduation, I was like, I was like, I didn't want to be that person that was sitting there in the crowd at graduation and asked the Lord, like, all right, what's next? I didn't want to be that just because I just felt like I don't want to be a loser. Like, right. that, like that's so like, tell me this, like throughout this whole thing, how many years did you guys go? We went two, two, two years. Um, you're, you're still trying to figure out like what it is that you want to do, but nothing is like fitting. Well, like, I it's felt, just like, yeah, don't really want to do that. Don't really want to do this, but there's still like a draw for ministry. Well, like I, because like I got those like prophecies when yeah. I was younger, I, I was like, well, I'm called to the ministry. And like, uh, actually John came to preach at, at RBI and was talking about the fivefold ministry. And he took like a whole week and each day, like was explaining like the give, like, you know, pastor, uh, evangelist, teacher, all that. And he, and I was like process of illumination. Like I like growing up with my dad, we, 
he would he traveled he did traveling sales for a while and i always loved traveling with it like that was like one of the like my favorite things i love traveling going seeing new places you know eating the food and, and just being on the road that was so much fun for me mm -hmm. and i was like well i, I grew up loving to travel uh, I'm, I'm gonna be an evangelist yeah right so, <laughs> and and uh, i just like that's just how my mind like processed it and i'm like i'm, I'm we're gonna be an evangelist so that was also part of the reason why we felt like hey let's let's do rbi but uh so i was just i remember what was it winter camp meeting 2018 right before we graduated i remember meeting nick and jay like we had talked over like Instagram, but then we met um, after a conference and they're like, they're like, yo, let's go to Taco Bell. And we just, <laughs> it was so weird. Like I had just met these guys, like in me and Elena, we got in the back of like one of a minivan that you guys had rented. <laughs> that was so funny. And we just sat, um, we just sat and we were just talking and they were asking us about, you know, like, you know, how we like RBI, like what we feel called to like, to do, like, you know, what just getting to like know each other and they're like wow like and they were saying like how we basically like described what uh what you guys do here and I was like and Jay I think it was like Nick or Jay said that you know you guys should like be interns for us and I'm like that would be cool like I'd be like down for that and like uh, about a month or two later Nick was like hey um here's the link don't tell anybody yet it's not like published but like, I'll let you know when to apply and cause we're having interns this summer and I'm like, Oh, cool. And I remember, uh, like a couple of days before that, that's when I was like, like I was praying cause like I've had like this <clears throat> healthy fear of like not being a loser. Like right. I, I didn't, I didn't want to like amount to like, I don't want, never want to like want to amount to nothing. Yeah. And that was like my fear. Like I was like, I, I'm like, Lord, please. I don't want to sit like graduation day in the pews and ask what's next. I want to know like clear direction, like, like give me like a clear sign what to do and where to go. Mm -hmm. And within a couple of days, that's when Nick sent me that text, like, Hey, watch out for this, uh, watch out for this link and just apply. And that's when we applied. And funny enough, it was around when we had um, spring break mm -hmm. it was, and we were up visiting family in Pennsylvania and, uh, one of the two, Nick or Jay, said, hey, could you come out to Pittsburgh? And that's like a four-hour drive from like where we live, yeah. where we were from in Williamsport. And I was like, yeah, sure. And I, <laughs> so we drove all the way out to Pittsburgh and had an interview with Mags. And that's when we got accepted for internship. So that was like, that was like crazy. This all happened within like two or three months. Hmm. So, that, so that happened. We graduate and then we end up coming moving back up to Pennsylvania and like that was the Lord because I hate Florida Florida is so I hate <laughs> like I hate the heat I mean if you can't tell by my my pigment my skin tone you're crazy yeah I hate I hated Florida like Dr. Rodney's church was amazing like mm -hmm. everything other than like I hated everything about Florida other than like Dr. Rodney and like like the media like going to school and <laughs> church there was amazing but like I there's no way there's no way I could ever live there so that, it was like the Lord that like we got to like we got to move back here and so then then we just then we started internship with you guys got on the road again which is super fun mm -hmm. went to Asbury and then came back here for a month did did work in the studio and then we went back to Newark so that w and then uh after that summer was over um now during this whole entire time are you still thinking like I'm going to be a preacher. Oh yeah. I, I, I felt like that up until like last year, <laughs> like no, no joke. I felt like that until like last year. Like I, it was like, what, where, what happened? Like what, what was the change of heart there? The change of heart was like, so after internship, like I didn't have an expectation to like get hired. I knew like nothing was like a guarantee mm -hmm. out of that. Um, but I had a job that like I continued working um, from f from Florida that I worked all through internship and all through that. So I just like, hey, I'm just going to bank some money and, you know, um, I just I'll I'll save some money to start up and, and to go in the ministry or whatever, you know. And up until about like last year, like I just felt so frustrated. I never like had. I just never had like a drive or like a motivation to like actually like start up and like 
go into, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's just, it wasn't in me, you know, like it, like we're all like put on this earth for like one, one main reason, you know, you know, some of us are meant to be in the ministry. Some of us are meant to be business people, some government, you know, I just didn't feel like that passion, like that, that burning in me to actually like birth like a minute you, you know what i mean yeah and i i felt so frustrated and you can ask elena i remember like i was so like angry like i like angry with myself like trying to you like, felt like you were going I you're felt, you're all hands on deck but you're not yeah. really going anywhere yeah and i felt like i was just like spinning my wheels like yeah. i was make you know i was making really good money for like you know the job i had and it was you know it was really good but i just i felt like comfortable but i also felt like I just didn't have that that passion right. to like actually start it. Well, that's that's what's interesting about you know b- receiving prophetic words like you're called to be in the ministry. Then it taints your view of like what you're called to do. Yeah. Or you know when when somebody says that you're called to be a preacher, um, because I can I can with Abel that he was given a word that he was going to be an evangelist. And that's the, Elena told me that testimony. She because she sat down. You know we were, we went for a walk one night and we were just talking and she was telling me how Abel had like a similar experience. Like he was called to, you know, he was called to be in the ministry. Right. He was given a prophetic yeah. word by Todd Bentley. Oh God. <laughs> the, ki- ki- the kicker in the face guy. Yeah. Did he kick in the face? <laughs> I don't know. Like that. He was, yeah. Yeah. But he gave him a prophetic word and literally Abel was sold. Like he was yeah. going to be an evangelist and, the word, it was funny because I ended up finding it and somebody had transcribed it for him. And the word was, you are called to evangelism. I see you before um, thousands of people on a stage. And what's interesting is that when we went to Newark, Abel was there. He was like right behind the stage. The stage. So it really, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, so it really messed him up and it took him about a five, it was a five year detour. Uh, because he was so, he had given himself over to become an evangelist. He was reading books on evangelism. He was, you know, get all that he did was he was just wanted to be an evangelist. Right. And so then, um, so he's spinning his reels. He's not frustrated. So frustrated. Yeah. yeah. He's not getting because anywhere. He, you know what? Like, I'm sure I'm not trying to put like words in his mouth, but like, I'm sure he could feel the pressure of like life is continuing and I haven't like started Bread this ministry or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's and it's exactly, like, but I don't want to, nor exactly, do I know how, I know. you know what yeah. I mean? That's exactly how I felt too. It was like, I was like, I know like time is running out and, yeah. that, and it felt like such like an immense pressure. Like I got to do this. Mm-hmm. I got to do this. And like that, like pressure, like weighs you, like it weighed me down. Like it, it, it was set. It was like bad. Yeah. You know, it, it could cause a lot of people to backslide oh, 100%. Back because it's like if, if you feel that pressure and you don't know how to like how to um, alleviate it, yeah. then that 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 really will start having you question like your walk with the Lord. Like you're yeah. not saying anything. I'm yeah. I'm here frustrated and you're not speaking into me. I have no direction. This is all your fault. I'm out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it really it, obviously it doesn't progress like that quickly, but over like a couple of years. No, if I would have kept on that path, like I, I would have been a mess. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So that's what, what ended up happening in Abel. And so he, it was like literally like almost like a five year detour where it was like he thought that he was called into ministry and he wasn't su- like successful in business. And then so it was almost like everything, all the doors are being closed. And well, if you think about it, why. like if you're not going to be one one sided about what it is and where where it is that you're going, you're going to be kind of like, well, I'm good at this, but I'm good at that. And I, I feel t- to be doing this that you're literally torn in like 18 different directions. I'm good at this. Which is interesting. I'm good at that. But I feel like I have to go here because people have prophesied. And that's a really, like, that's such a common thing in the body of Christ. Show enough. When people give words like that, like the the word has to bear witness with with your spirit. Right. So, uh, you know. But what's interesting is that sometimes it it does because of your love for God. Correct. And if you haven't fully developed yourself in prayer and the word, you can easily take those things as like, oh, then then I'm I'm to be called into ministry instead of focusing in on what it is that you're good at, whether it's business, whether, you know, it's uh, carpentry or whatever it is, uh, you know, 
right. honing in on that and saying like, I can join this with the ministry. And so with Abel, it was like, he was, it was just one shut door after the next. And then he was, ha I think it was like Jonathan came over one time and he was like, yeah, you know, I'm just feeling like a little frustrated. And Jonathan's like, do you want to know why you're feeling frustrated? And yeah. Abel was like, yes, of course. And so he's like, it's because you're not called into evangelism. And yeah. I was there and I remember seeing Abel, like he was like mad mm -hmm. because yeah. it was something that he's literally invested, like read books on and all oh, that yeah. kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. It was like, what you need to do is you're called to be the best construction worker that you can be. And like, those are the books that you should be reading and you should be mastering your craft that you're gifted in. And so it went from, I'm angry to the weight of the world is off of my shoulders. And now I can finally get back to something that I love to do, Yeah, which was construction work. Yeah. And so that's exactly what ended up like propelling us, praise God, um, and taking us out of that rut was somebody being real and being like, you are not called <laughs> to evangelism so elena tells you this story yeah she tells me that and, and so what d is does that help you or you're like mm. it yeah it would <laughs> 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 no it actually helped me a lot like and it, it i felt like kind of like the same way like how you described abel like i felt it felt like like the weight of the world was off my shoulders right because she was just like take the next couple of days and this is like when you guys were like going to Denver, I think, mm -hmm. last year. Yeah. She goes, just take like the next couple of days, even the next like couple of weeks, and just ask the Lord like, what to you know, if you know if you're actually like called, you know, if we're called to be in the ministry, you know, she knew, and she knew the answer, mm -hmm. but she told you know that's what, you know, she you know she was like encouraging me to do, so I did, and I just. I just felt like the piece, like I'm not called in the ministry and that, you know, I, I just knew like, that's not where my passion was. Right. And she goes, and she goes, write down what you're passionate about and just like, you know, write it down like on paper and, what just, a woman. and, and look at it. What a and woman. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. So that like, that like really helped me. And I realized like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not called in the ministry. And then shortly after, I'm um, called preaching. Yeah, called into called to called, preaching called because to preach, you are yeah. in ministry. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I end up uh shortly after that, I end up you gave me a call one day and you said, Hey, can you come in? And you you needed help with like some like miscellaneous stuff. Sure. And then you said, Hey, do you want to help with our radio? And I'm like, sure. I thought it was like a contracting thing. And I'm like, sure. I mean, I can help with that. It was. And then like, to, and then all of a sudden I was like, maybe not. We need more and then, help. No. And then I got a text from a bunch of people and they're like, like Jess and some other people. And they're like, wow, we're so happy to have you. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah. And it's been like so good because in that time between like internship and up until like last fall, mm -hmm. I felt like. I felt like I I just didn't like have anybody here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. um, I don't have like a lot of family. Like a lot of my family's younger than me. I don't have like cousins. I just have like my immediate family basically. And, um, I just, it was just me and Elena really. And I didn't, I like, you know, I hung out with Nick and Jay. I didn't, but I didn't. Come here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Like I I didn't hang out with like a lot of people, round so it was. Come here, come here. Okay. Come. <laughs> Good. But it was like it was so great, like like having people that like care for you. Like, yeah. For and the sure. past couple months have been like great. Like it's a family. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> it is. It's a. Fa it really is a family. <laughs> and I'm sure that you've. I mean, I think outside of Rob and Nick, you're probably here longer i mean you sleep here <laughs> last Sometimes. week i slept here yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 this is really your home and we seriously yeah. could i mean it's i don't know where we would be if you hadn't helped i'm so glad that we hired you when we did um but what so what a what a change uh, but at the same time what you do is just as much ministry as any kind of preaching Sure. Yeah. Because think about it. I mean, if we like uh, we talk about it all the time is doing things with excellence. Yes. But doing things with the urgency of souls on the other side. So right. if if a broadcast doesn't go out, 
then those are souls are that are at stake. Right. If you know what I mean, if if something doesn't um, you know, work, then those are souls that right. can't hear the gospel or you know what I mean? So it really is a weighty kind of thing. Yeah. And it's no less ministry than preaching. Yeah. And you're gonna get other opportunities to preach. I mean, we all have, but you know, it's interesting that the there's so many, you know, like the, there's people who think that ministry looks like suit and tie pulpit right. and then that's that but that's not what ministry looks like um in most cases first corinthians 12 if you have it in your bibles open up with me <coughs> everyone's very thankful that uh, for this testimony because first of all you're showing your transparency but you're also showing that like it's okay not to have it to get like not to have it all figured out what 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 scripture first corinthians 12 28 so I just find, find that, you know, all you can do is be obedient. And so I really do feel that you going to ministry school was you guys being obedient. Um, oh, 100%. To what you feel, felt like. That. Now, it didn't look like what you guys ended up thinking it was going to look like. I mean, there's so many years ahead of us. Let's yeah. not, you know. But, um, but I think that that obedience really led to the neck. It always, it's the steps of obedience. It's not a leap. It's like, what is the Lord telling you to do next? And then you do it. And then something else unravels. Like the plan is so perfectly orchestrated. It's amazing. Well, that was like a testimony in and of itself, like going to Bible school, because it was the same thing. Like when I graduated from Bible school, mm -hmm. I remember like going into my senior year, like I didn't apply to Like I applied to like one college. Yeah. <laughs> I got accepted and um, it was like a Christian school. My mom, like, my mom and I like were were very very close, and she would go to me with like to like college fairs, and she was like very like very set on like there has to be um, a chapel on campus, yeah. there has to be a church that you that you attend. Great. So like she was like adamant that like she, we would go to these different places, and even like Valley Forge, like they changed their name, they changed from Valley Forge Christian College to University of Valley Forge, oh, just know. they and they said because when they send people to like foreign fields. And they send them to other countries. They don't want the name Christian attached to it. My mom's like, no. <laughs> she goes, that's not a good sign. And I said, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, she goes, it's not good. She goes, they're, you know, they're obviously ashamed. And I said, oh, okay. Well. So she like helped me narrow that down. And I remember coming to uh, the end of my, it was like halfway through my senior year. I was like, and oh, mind you, I was still like wishy-washy. And it shows you like how, like, like, if I could like sum up my testimonies, like God's been like so good to me, even like cool. even when like I was wishy washy, even when like Facts. even when like you're not fully serving, like He's still faithful. He sure is. So I like I was just like you, on a win. I was like, Lord, I was just very plain. I said, Lord, if you want me to go to college, like I'll go to college. Like I wasn't ever set on going or not going. I said, and if you want me to go to college, open the door for me and if you, I said and if it's any any way possible can you make it tuition free I said I really don't want to go in debt because I like okay. I like I knew college is a scam unless you're like going to be a doctor yeah. or something that's yeah. gonna but even then some yeah yep. I was just like Lord if you can pay for it I remember my dad came home from work and I remember he'd always come home same routine go in wash his face or whatever right after work and he had just found out about the revival today radio app yeah back in like 24 14 and he said and he called I remember him yelling my name like I lived um we had an a-frame loft house I was up in the very top in the loft yeah that was my room and my dad all the way in the basement I heard him yell and I, I was like oh. I thought something was wrong yeah I like I thought I was in trouble or I, or I did something and I like ran I was like, uh, like like ran down the stairs super fast and I was like what what's going on he goes he goes have you heard of RBI? He goes, he goes, you need to apply to this. They're giving out, they only have a hundred scholarships. You need to apply now. So I remember I reached out to info at revival today and I said, I was wondering if I could have a scholarship. Wow. And that's, and that was like within like days of when I prayed, I was like, Lord. And I prayed, you know, that prayer, like asking the Lord to open up a door for college I and know. it was Did totally free. And that interesting that the same opportunity that was given via radio was what you would be doing. <laughs> You basically don't. Yeah, that's already that's now. actually really true. <laughs> so yeah, that's that was like that was such a, like a wild test. I look back on that, I'm like, that's amazing. Like I'm neither Elena nor I are like in you know tens of thousands of dollars Great in debt. Like and it's like 
it's such like a great feeling. Yeah. Like I see kids I went to school with and they're like up to their eyeballs in debt yeah. and we're in a He's shutdown right now. And yeah. like, you know, all of them are physical therapists or oh. nurses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our, yeah back right. in the day, it was commu communication. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. What uh, everybody yeah. wanted. We now it's a physical at. therapist assistant. Excuse me. So that's crazy. First yeah. Corinthians 12, 28. Here are some of the parts God has appointed to the church. First, our apostles. Mm. Second, mm. our prophets. Our, Third, our, our first, our what? Our first, our what? First, our apostles. Oh, I thought you said apostles. Second, our prophets. Third, our teachers. Then those who do miracles. Those who have the gift of healing. Those who can help others. Do people just skip right over yeah, there? I guess, I guess. Yeah. Those who have the gift of leadership. Huge. These are all so yeah. important for the church, for the body of Christ. And those who speak in unknown languages. These, the, so, so when we say, are you called to the ministry? You could really be under any of these and still be fully, fully in ministry. Right. There is no step down. I mean, literally, I mean, I, I, you know, we, we always talk about it. You know, if you're, everybody wants to be number one. But then you, you don't think about like the number two at Apple. He's sitting pretty. Do you know what I mean? Number three is two. So <laughs> you have to really think about like the, the, the greater scope of ministry as well. Not everyone is called to be um, a preacher. So I knew that I was, because I was, I was told all in our youth, you know, that we were going to be um, preachers and that kind of stuff. But w I was asked to preach one time at our youth group. <laughs> And I bombed it so bad. Yeah. I was so thankful to Pastor Max for that opportunity because it really let me in on something very significant. And, and that was that I am not called to preach. I was like, do you get it, guys? I'm like yelling at the people. Yeah. And they're like, no, we don't. We have no idea what you're talking about. So, you know, but I did still have a love for ministry, which right. is like really cool. But so so it's very important that people understand that there's so many elements of ministry that you can be a part of without being the number one, without being the face of an organ organization. Right. You know what I mean, Ava? What are you reading? I'm reading what Dakes has to say about this verse 28. Okay. So it says here, helps, Greek, antilempis. I made that up. A support, help, an aid. I skipped over this word because I don't know how to say it. Uh, yeah. You got me too. <laughs> I, I was an honor student. <laughs> an aid. <laughs> Only in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, and refers to every kind of help God sets in the church. It can't be limited to the work of deacons and deaconesses, as some teach, for there were other helps besides these. It does not refer to persons only, but to the various spiritual gifts which people fill which fill people with power to help. It's mentioned in the midst of references to certain gifts. Read that, that sentence again. It does not refer to persons only, but to the various spiritual gifts which fill people with the power to help. Yes. Isn't that good? That's so that's good. good. Mm, that's good. Because a lot of times people think that, you know, it's, it's, like you're, it's, a, it's a step down, but you still need to be endowed with power. To do what you guys do. Yeah. Because holy cannoli, you guys do a whole lot. Well, yeah. it's also so it's, cool. There's it's ca cool and, and, and calm. It really is a power. It's, it's a gift. When you, when any, any time you feel to do something like um, that's like a movement or like you're gearing up to do something big, like you can't just do that on your own. And I know like for a very long time, I think Jonathan always thought like, oh, we could just kind of like, you, we could um, outsource everything. We could have somebody design this and somebody do that and that and the other. But I always realized like if, if you were ever going to do something that was meaningful, then there was people, there was going to be a team. I don't want my hair like this, Jay. I want my hair like this. Okay. <laughs> there was going to be a team that, um, was going to come behind you mm -hmm. and, and, and steward whatever it is that vision is going to be. You know what I mean? Like help, help assist, help to like bring that vision into completion. You know what I mean? So it's like, I just wish that most more people would just kind of understand that, um, it's a, it's a team effort and, um, it's important. 
Like it's not a small thing for you not like had you not like I don't you know it, it we it, th there would be a deficit there would be holes. So I just uh, for all of you that maybe are pursuing something in the ministry, um, I d don't be discouraged if it's not going to be like uh, you're you're gearing up for like your own ministry, your own preaching ministry. There's going to be plenty of people that are called to do that. But if you feel like frustrated in that element or frustrated in in uh, where you're at right now. Because you feel like I don't want to, <laughs> like ultimately it's, yeah. it's, that's just what it comes down to. It's yeah. like, I don't want to, like, it's good. Like I, I, at times I'm sure you felt like, yeah, like stirred up and like, yeah, I could do this. And then, you know, when push comes to shove and you're, you're, you know, alone, it's like, it's, you don't have it in you. That's right. okay to recognize that that's not in you, but you know, I just I wish that more people would have this kind of a testimony instead of just giving up and like walking away from ministry altogether. Well, God yeah. forbid I would have actually like went in the pulpit ministry. I would have bombed. <laughs> I mean, I I could have <laughs> I could have been good maybe for like a little bit, but like it would have been very bad. Right. Well, well you have a, a, like an, a, an extreme passion for something. Yeah. You're right. It, you, it but if been it's a not ultimately time like what I was like called to do, it would have just it wouldn't have lasted. Right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, but unfortunately there's lots of people that started off where you were at and they're not even saved anymore because they yeah. can't differentiate like the call to ministry or the pull to ministry and they give into the frustration and just come to the realization that I guess this isn't like what I believe. Right. You know what I mean? Like, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, but I've seen more people in my Bible school that have like backslidden and altogether have left the faith, let alone ministry, yeah. because they, they couldn't decipher the fact that I'm not called to a fivefold ministry. I'm called to be like oh. an assistant to the fivefold ministry or, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the gifts of, of help and whatever it is. You know what I mean? And, and all leadership. of that, all of them. Right. Yeah. All of them. They're and so, so integral in churches. Think about that. If you didn't have a proper administrator in churches, that would be scary because let's face it, most pastors, if you're in the fivefold ministry, you are probably not, uh, you have no idea what you're doing administratively. Do you know what I mean? You really do need that help, that, that administrative help. Yeah, but you know what, what, what's the, what's the sick thing that's happening now? It's that like, if people aren't getting the glory, if they're not getting that, cause they want that, they feel Camera. like they feel like there's like this like celebrity complex behind change the shot. <laughs> um, so they're, they're like, <laughs> they, they want the like celebrity element of it, the celebrity <laughs> aspect of it. And, um, so it's like, if, uh, you know, and that just, I don't know. I don't, I, that I, I don't get. Like if you feel a draw to ministry, but like nothing's opening up for you, it's time to like take, yeah take a good evaluation of what it what you're doing and how you can steward it the right way facts yeah. do you know what i mean facts. instead of getting frustrated instead of like trying to convince yourself that you're number one when you're not you're not you're not that's how and it's that's going to understand. burn your behind but out remember a number number two or number three position it, it doesn't hurt no if, if that's what you're going with it, just be I number just, two, but be you know the what? best number two. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the, the, how, you know, is you're, you're in your element is that it comes with ease yes. and there's peace that surrounds you. Facts. Once you start doing things that you're called not to do, or you're working outside of that ministry thing that God has for you to do. Um, the moment you step out into that, it, it, it starts getting uncomfortable. You start getting frustrated. All of these things are major signs right. that you should just kind of like, let, let me back up, reevaluate. You know, there's lots of times, even, even in the five fold ministry, there's lots of times and opportunities that we were called to not called, but offered a position, um, to pastor. Yeah. And we never took the bait, even though, mm -hmm. gosh, we desperately needed it at those times yeah. Yeah. where it was like a solid, you know, you, it's having consistent pay is like amazing. Right. You know, not not having to be like, we don't know where we're going to be in the next two months. I don't know how like what's going to open up and all that. Yeah. That was so uncertain for us when we were like 21, 22. Mm -hmm. And so like 
it would have been really nice had we just said, let's just do the, the youth pastor position. It's not, it ain't going to kill nobody. It's still ministry. But we didn't because we never felt, and, and had we done it, we would have felt that pressure. Yeah. We would have been frustrated yes. and we would have lost time and lost opportunity. Yeah. And so it, it goes the opposite. Like if you are called to pastor, you better be pastoring. If you are called to be an evangelist, you better be evangelizing because it, it this d- just honing in on what it is that you're called to and being the best at it yeah. is so important. And you know what? No one else can, can confirm that, but the Lord. And a lot of people are living for a confirmation through somebody else's lips. Well, Okay. Mm, say la. <laughs> say that again. Somebody else, you know, where there's too many people living for a prophetic word, confirmation from somebody else. When God, especially in the things of ministry, you should be hearing the voice of God for you and for your family. Like you yourself, without any outside sources. I'm I'm, you know, especially in the charismatic, and you can you can you'll know this. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's waiting for a word everyone's waiting for a, a, a prophecy. It don't work like that. Like God wants to speak to you in your quiet time. That's how I always thought it was. I always thought it was like, hey, like, you know, you go to this, like this house, this prayer meeting that someone's hosting at their house with really crappy food. on the. And you're waiting for and, a word. And yeah, and they, you do worship for like 10 hours and then God speaks to you. Right. That's I, th- no, I, thought no it was so, I thought it was like so ritualistic. Right. You know? And, and that's what, that's what get, kind of gets people kind of like in a slump when it comes to all things spiritual because it's like there's no word intake. So you're just kind of like, it's just, it's not, it's not healthy. Like that, that kind of, of wanting to get a prophecy, wanting to get somebody to speak into your life without any kind of word or um, prayer time yourself, having those things developed on the inside of you will always lead you to backslide. Always. Like always, why? Because there's no substance when, when, when you're, you're only going based on a word that somebody's going to give you or a word. And you know what? Some people, they can hone in on that gift and, and, you know, facilitate that. But then what you get a word and then you're on to the next word. You want like some, some, somebody else to speak into you and you're, you're really depending on somebody else's, you know, words to impact you. That is not the way that God structured this thing to work for you. He wants to speak to you. He wants for you to get alone with him and really desire. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be open to you. That's what he's saying to individuals, not to just, okay, he's knocking and then, no, no, he's saying, I can tell you where to go. I can tell you exactly, I can lay it all out. Everything that you love, everything you hate, I can bring that all together and, and, and come up with a perfect plan for you. So long as you get alone and it, it, it's a testament to you and your walk with the Lord, because it took that. Mm -hmm. It took you saying, God, like, what do you want me to do? And it wasn't ministry, like uh, in the sense of like pulpit ministry and and preaching and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it was, I can use my gifts to aid in the development of, of this ministry. And in fact, that's, that's what I want to do. This is, I have all of these different, uh, you know, things that I'm really good at, but I'm not really putting to good use. And now I can join my gifts to this ministry and they benefit from it. And then a while, while doing that, you're having impact on people's lives, people's salvation, you know what I mean? So the, it's yeah. no small thing what it is that you are called to do, um, especially if, if you're in, in ministry school and you're like, man, like, what could it be? Like, whatever it can be is for souls. That's what we're living for. All That's why I love RBI, because it's like they're, they're called revivalists. Everybody in, in, and in their own right, that's what you are, because you're reviving something that was dead, whether it's through a video, whether it's through a, 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 a photograph, whether it's through business or government. It's instituting those principles upon the, the lives of, of individuals to get it right. You don't have to be frustrated. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go to Bible school and then be a barista you know, for the, for the next 15 years. Sure. And so you, and this is, this is such a common thing for people that just don't feel like there isn't, they don't know what to do, you know? Um, and so I'm, I'm here to let you know, there are several people from this ministry, 
um, that do not preach on on the pulpit, and they are as equally as effective as somebody who is who is uh, you know preaching the 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 word of God. There is there there is a unity. It's a body. You know, that's why the, the, the word of God says you can't tell the pinky it's not, you know, you're insignificant. You can't. You, you miss a pinky and you will feel the, 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 the you know, the missing, the missing element of what it is, a, a pinky toe, even a freaking pinky toe. You lose your equilibrium. You lose your equilibrium, exactly. I mean, it just, it, everything goes kaput. That was nerdy of you, but I like it. Um, and so, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't ever Freak. feel like you can't, if you ever had a toothache, yo. You realize your whole body is focused in on this tiny little part of, <laughs> of your face mm -hmm. that's pulsating. Yeah. You, you realize even a tooth, even a freaking tooth, if it's, if it's out of whack, you feel it. Your whole body can't even like function. You're like, I don't need, I can't even talk, you know? Maybe that's just me. I've had really bad toothaches in my life. But I'm just saying, um, you know, this should really encourage you um, to, to, to not give up on the, the, the hopes and aspirations of ministry. God is still calling you. You just have to hone in and see what it is like that, that vein, that segment uh, as to what it is. And don't give up. If God told you you were supposed to be somewhere, if God told you this is the, the, this is the place for you, um, then, then you should just continue to develop those gifts, continue to press in and continue to ask God, because what happens is that your gift makes room for you. Your gift will make a room for you to walk into. Okay. So, so that's what that, 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 you know, word. So don't ever give up. Don't ever get frustrated about what it is that you're doing. Just pray and ask God for the release. What is it? I want specifics. I want to know exactly what I'm to do. And he will give you specifics. He will talk to you about it. He and you, you can live yes, he will. with a, a very direct, focused, hmm? I'm trying to come up with a word that's not there. It's not coming to me. It's not coming to me. Like a laser focus. You, you laser focus. Yes. Laser focus. Yes. Um, and and there's no better way to live. Yeah. Amen. Like when you get up now, there's like purpose. Right. There's like a vision. There's like a I know where I'm going. I don't have to feel frustrated. Yeah. You know. And in that, you you were saying because you're just so kind, is that like even even when, when he was trying to figure out the purpose. He gave, he put it all in the hands of God and then God fulfilled even the other desires that he wanted. It's like, we're here alone and now you've got like family because here that's just inevitably what you are. If you work for this team, that's just what you become, whether you like it or not. We're all up in your business and we don't even care. So, um, you know, I just, uh, just understand that today too. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're, you're feeling frustrated. Give it to the Lord, put it in the hands of the Lord. And, and what was the turnaround time for that? Like once you decided, I'm not going to preach, <laughs> like that's not what I'm called to do. How long of a, of a like turnover um, was that? I would say it was about no more than a couple weeks. For real? Yeah. Hmm. yeah that happened like, cause I, rem I remember we, Elena and I went out for a walk, so it couldn't have been that cold. Yeah, it was yeah. like it was like in early fall, and I so remember. Probably no more than. Yeah, it was like early exactly fall. Two days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was probably like shorter than what I think. But yeah, I remember what that time um, where you know I just asked the Lord like what to do, and within like a couple weeks, I got a call, you know, to come in, and the rest of it's history. Mm -hmm. Been here, so yeah. But not only that, like it not only like getting a job and like finding like, like purpose, it like, I've always, you know, been like, like a creative like person, like, like I've always like had a big imagination to like do things. And like, I was just so blocked up, you know, like, like, tr like when you don't have like your purpose, you're like, you're, you're just mentally like in, in every single way, like blocked up. Which totally. is like interesting because the moment that you, you were like, this isn't what I'm called to do. I'm a creative. And then all of these opportunities for you to be creative just opened up naturally. Yeah. And like, and, and ever since then, like I've like, it's like sparked like more creativity, like, well, not only what I can do here, but like in personal, like endeavors that I, that I'm taking and, and just, 
you know, pursuing things that I've always been passionate about yeah. since yeah. I was young. Yeah. So it, it, it's been great here. Like it's been great just being a part of a family, but not only that, like just doing what I love doing. Mm. Amen. And the so, Lord listen. can do it for you. Yes, he can. And that's the thing. Like if you're a creative, maybe you have a gift that you want to use in ministry. It's not far fetched to want those things. Like when I had um, part of my testimony was that I'm an administrator, but I was working for a lawyer at the time and he was cranky and cray cray mm. and God rest his soul. And, uh, <laughs> and it was, it was misery. I loved what I did, but I wanted to do it for the Something ministry. that counted. And I remember yeah. telling that, like be, being like able asking like, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be an administrator, but I want to, do that for a ministry and slowly but surely like those things opened up for me for Patrick it was like I love finances but I want to do that for a ministry and people were like no that's never going to happen so whatever it is that you want to do the the Lord will open a, up a door for you mm -hmm. and so Sarah came out with this book it's it's for creatives it's called um it's called sitting before king stand before kings <laughs> Sitting. sitting sitting you're gonna be that cool that you don't even have to stand in front of a game you just sit there because you you're gonna have, have that much swag y'all <laughs> no that's just stand respect, before kings, how creatives get promoted in the kingdom of god and it's there it's a very amazing read if you're a creative steph de francisco has uh read it as well de francesco how did you uh, get francisco i don't from know that i haven't, read, I haven't reader, seen yo. her in a long time so I'm sorry, sight Steffi. reader and so this is a great book for all of you creatives if you haven't gotten it yet it's available on amazon am i correct yep available on amazon and it gives nice like tips you know like if you're a creative you can how you can uh use your work in the ministry if you're a photographer how you can you know uh set standards and then have a protocol for like what what to do if you're you're a creative if you're a photographer if you do web design whatever it is that you want to do and how to kind of connect it to the ministry very good read if you are a creative um, but if you're anything else you can do that unto the lord and go with what energizes you. I think a lot of times people are like, I need to, because I love the Lord, I need to want to preach. I need to be a missionary. And that's just not, if your passion, is, passion isn't there for that, then that's probably an indicator that that's not what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? That's right. Um, I know this is going to help so many people. Facts. It alleviates the stress of people who are, actively pursuing ministry to be a preacher to be an evangelist and then be like maybe i should just follow what i love to do right because that's that's typically tied to the the call that god has placed inside of you because right. i i hate finances everything finances but then patrick he like lights up i mean it's just so really whatever energizes you is an indicator that that's what you're supposed to be doing but also the fact that like if you are in that like frustrating like mode where you're you're doing things outside of your calling like you are called to ministry like don't give up on that like don't continue to pursue things that are are done outside of the ministry if if ministry is something that God has called you to like he will make room for you like Brennan you know you do radio you do uh, like I, I wish that we had Radiance because they had created like some of the most beautiful like visuals for our women's conference. And what did you do? You just filled a, a bathtub. Yeah, we did. Um, I wish you guys could see it. Yeah. No, I, I, f I just I felt like so I felt like I just kept seeing like flowers and I kept seeing like. Just like something very like, just something very be beautiful and like them being in Florida um, during the springtime. I just kept seeing flowers. So I also that T-shirt that you made yeah. was dank. Yeah. Yeah. But I just I don't know. For some reason, I kept seeing flowers. And so I got I went out and I handpicked a bunch of um, I handpicked a, a whole bunch of flowers, probably like 50, 60 dollars worth of of every every kind of flower yeah, i could find works. that fit the color scheme that we were going for mm -hmm. and um i got like powdered milk and we filled uh nick and i uh, filled up my bathtub at my apartment and we 
you know, we set up a mobile studio in my bathroom and, and it's hard to describe. Without, it's so without, hard without, without knowing it. Uh, what it is, um, but it was, it was, it was like a flower. It was like a DIY flower bath, basically. It, but it just looked unbelievable. Like I just, you know, all of those things, like you, you want, and for ministers out there, like you want that element of excellence in your ministry. You want to kind of like be like as, as ministers we should be like giving the world the most creative things because yeah. we have the creator living on the inside of us like right. he's the one who created the heavens and the earth yeah. creativity comes from the creator right so there should never be a mental block there should never be a creative block there should never be any kind of block when you're a full of, of the spirit of god because you know he's the one that created everything he created the colors. He created so you know visually and um, aesthetically. When it comes to the th the things in the ministry, it should never be like a, a word document, like words ninety eight. Like y'all should y'all yeah. should invest in quality graphic design. You should invest in quality like video stuff. Make your stuff look good. Make it look presentable. Make it look so that you can like stick it in with any secular thing and people would still like notice like, wow, look at, look at the creatives behind it. Like that's, that's done with excellence. That's what we are striving to, to, to do here at Revival Today, especially with all the, th uh, the long list of things that we have to tackle in the future. Like we need people that are going to be creatives. And I'm just saying that like to encourage all of the people out there that feel like you are want to do something for the ministry, like the work will be out there. Uh, so don't give up on it and don't give up hope like, uh, you know, this is just never going to work for me. There's, there's no real gift. Uh, there's no real room for me in the ministry. There, there absolutely is. There absolutely is. So um, I, I hope this is, um, you know, kind of motivated you to stay the course and to pray and to fast, seek God's word, uh, seek his will. And then like, like Elena said to Brennan, like, what is it that you're good at? Start writing these things down. Start, what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that makes you feel like if, if I could do anything and like get up really early in the morning with anticipation and uh, uh, a great desire, what would that look like? Tackle that, hone in on that, pray over that, lay hands on that vision and watch God fulfill every dream, every desire. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And um, if maybe maybe you don't know what you want to do, and that's okay too. Maybe it's like you have a desire to be in ministry, but you don't know exactly what you want to do. We have an internship that we're going to announce today. Do we have that video? Do we have a video for internship? We should. All right, let's play it, my, shall we? That was my first rinky-dink promo that I did. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, created by Brendan, just, uh, just so you guys know. He made this video, so... On top of everything, you do quite a lot, Brennan. Yeah. Thank you. People love my nails. Amazon. Oh, nice. Thanks. That glitter is actually my glitter, so can I get some credit for that? Nope. Never. No, no video. Just mm. kidding. No video. Um, where? So just go to revivalcommunity.com <laughs> forward slash internship. <laughs> and <laughs> what happened to the video, guys? Oops. Gotcha. Oopsie. Well, anyways, maybe, maybe you'll, first of all, the applications are going to be vetted. And so uh, I'm not quite sure how many, I'll have to talk to Rachel, but um, I'm not quite sure how many internships are available. But internship time is very integral time, don't you think, Brennan? Because you yeah. kind of see the behind the scenes <laughs> of all the different ministries that, that are, all the happenings here at Revival Today. And so... You can see what y gives you energy. Maybe you love the media department. Maybe you love admin. And then you will... Oh! I'm not announcing anything, but oh. how cute is that? That is that literally boy? the most beautiful child I have Look ever Look at seen. all of his hair. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he's smiling. He's smiling. Um... <laughs> wow i'm literally flipping out tell me oh my gosh oh my gosh i love you un i cannot wait to hug him 
I literally I cannot literally wait. He is perfect. I'm obsessed. He is so perfect. You know what's interesting is like I I love seeing a newborn child, but I am thrilled for the mother that she is no longer pregnant. I agree. Because I agree literally, that. especially that last trimester, it's so uncomfortable. Revivalstudy.com forward slash internship. See what, what ministry life is all about. Maybe you want to do more preaching. Maybe the preaching energizes you. Maybe the media doing behind the scenes uh, editing work. Maybe that you love doing that. Maybe it's photography. You can dabble in it all. Fill out an application and we'll see you in the summer. Actually, it's, it's not too, it's at the end of May. Can you believe it? Here. It's at the end of the month. Next m- Internship. It, it's in a couple weeks. Yeah. May is this week. Oh, yeah, they have it. it. Let's play it. Oh, you guys are so sweet. We're going to play it now. Hey, are you an adult between the ages of 18 to 27? And do you feel called into the ministry? Or do you want to know more about the day-to-day operations of what goes on in a ministry? Well, if that's you, then we have an awesome opportunity for you to intern with us this summer from May 28th to June 19th. During this internship, you'll have loads of opportunity to learn about the day-to-day operations of a ministry. Not only that, but you'll also get the opportunity to travel and see what ministry is like on the road. So for more information, go to revivaltoday.com forward slash internship. We look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, you know, there you it know, is. If you're interested, you know, good. you know what to do. No. You know what to do. You know, good. I liked that um, both of our, our once upon a time interns are both now working for us. That's what I was going for. Isn't that so yeah. sweet? Good Love for them. you, Brennan. Good for you. Details. They're important. They are. Dallas, take it away. Wait, between the ages of 18 to 27, I guess I'm out. I don't know what the ages are. Are yep. they? It's yep. that's sweet. It's what it says. What it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's how it be. Well. Father, I thank you. Yes, God. <laughs> Amen. For Brennan. I thank you yeah. for Elena. I thank you for their testimony. I thank you, Father, that this message would permeate the hearts and the minds of those that feel that they were called to the ministry but somehow missed it. Father, I thank you Bring them back, Lord. that you would reignite the fire of yes. ministry upon the lives of those individuals that are watching that you divinely orchestrated for them to watch today, Lord, yes. for this message so that they wouldn't give up yes. on, on that dream. So I ask you, Lord God, to speak clearly, clearly to everyone every individual that wants clarity. I pray, Father, that you would give them a specific word today. In Jesus' name, I command the frustration to be gone and for the voice of God to come into your mind clearly in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that stagnancy, it is over, that everything of frustration, it is over today in Jesus' name, for we unmask the devil and his schemes to try to pull us backwards, to try to get us off of the perfect will that you have in store for us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your wonderful spirit that God guides us. It illuminates our path so that that we don't have to look to the left or to the right, but we can hone in on what it is that you've called for us to do and do it with excellence in Jesus name. For now, Father, I thank you that all those individuals that are looking for uh, a, a, an opportunity, a door to be open. I pray even now that those doors fling open yeah. in Jesus' name, that they would do everything that their heart d- desires to do, for that's your desire. You take delight in our desires. You you love to know uh, uh, what it is that we're passionate about, and, and you establish the work for us to do it in Jesus name. So right now, everything of frustration, I curse it and I command the confusion to go away for clarity to come in and for every individual wanting it today, Father, that your blueprint would come like a download. Even now, Father, that they wouldn't miss one step, that they wouldn't be frustrated from now until they're, you know, 35, 45, 65, whatever it is, before you come back, Lord, let us have done everything that you've called for us to do in Jesus name. And for those of you watching, it's so important that you hone in on what it is that you're called to do and pray for it. Pray against not being able to not do it. 
Does that make sense? Pray against the, 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 the fact, because ultimately what ends up happening is that most people will live and die not doing anything that God has called for them to do. Don't be that person. You are called. You are gifted. You are to do something that's out of the ordinary. And so in doing so, there's something that's required of you. You can't just hope and wish and just... I hope that opens. There has to be something on the inside of you that comes alive to stir it in, 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 in the way that you should get. You got to stir that thing up and you stir it up by prayer. You stir it up by fasting. You stir it up by speaking things. If you're constantly poo pooing your future, all of a sudden you're walking through crap. Well, you put that crap there. Get that poo pooing. Cause you know, okay. So, uh, you know, if, right. Uh, so, so I want you to be, uh, very careful, be very careful because, uh, it's, it's imperative that you understand your call and that you pursue the call and that you pray for your call. You pray for the calling. I was listening to Dag. I don't know why I keep calling him Dag. Is it Dag? Mm-hmm. Dag Hayward Mill. Cause in my head, I, I, I call him Daddy, daddy, no. dag, no. daddy, dag, but it doesn't come out like that. No. Daddy, dag, Hayward Mills. DHM. And so he was talking uh, the other day about the prayer, right, Katie? And so I got to call to you about the testimony thing. And he was talking about the prayer. And these were the seven things. Remember I was talking about the seven things? Yes. According to Judges 16, 16, which is the, uh, what Delilah did was a type and shadow of what prayer is. Right. Constantly seeking. And he's so dumb, he couldn't even see right. what she was trying to do. Right. Because it's interesting, like, after, uh, day after day, if you wake up and your hands are tied, and there's, like, you know, the, the military comes in to try to, like, kill you. You just like you're not. You're, hello, I just told this woman my secrets, right. and the, anyway, that's. But you know, so Mm-mm. he says there are seven things you got to pray about: the 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 presence of God never to leave you, for the strength and power of God mm-hmm. to never leave you, uh, for the freedom that you experience in God to never leave you, which is what we see, and most people can't see the freedom of God, right. which is why they're bound by religion. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, the position, understanding that there's a position that we have to fill, mm-hmm. fulfill. God gave Samson a position, mm-hmm. and he didn't realize he had that position until he lost it, didn't he? That's right. And he was called to smite the Philistine, to get rid of the, eradicate the enemy. Mm-hmm. And instead, he just kind of like made room for them, didn't he? Uh, position. And I'm saying this, pray, because, it, uh, you know, another, another thing that I just uh, posted, I think it was uh, a DAG, but I, I, it might have been somebody else. It's a, it, he said, if you don't use your power, you will lose it. That's what you depot. Oh, yeah, depot. If you don't use your power, you will lose it. This is all in, in, in sync with all of that. Uh, don't see it. See it, recognize that it's there, recognize that it's for you. God's glory, which is your, your, the, the, the sim- symbolic of your hair. What, what, what God's glory is, is what makes people attracted to you. What makes you kind. What makes them, nice. you know, be attracted to who you are. Yeah. It's important to have that. Yeah. A lot of people don't have that. No. A lot of people actually work in the opposite of that. <laughs> Yeah. And they don't really accomplish much of anything, even though they're, they've, they've got a, a great gift. They, they lack that kind of glory yeah. because it makes you kind, compassionate towards others. Um, number six, don't lose your sight. Don't lose sight of the things that God has called you to do. Samson lost his sight. He lost direction. And he actually lost his eyeballs, you know. It's true. Uh, and then number seven, at a boy. Um, and then number seven, don't lose your life. And I know that that might sound like far fetched for something like your life, but you know, if, if you don't live for your purpose, you're missing out on life. Like it's your, your living life. It's, it's, you're doing it without purpose. That's what a, what a waste of a life that don't, don't make your life be uh, wasteful. Hone in on what it is that you're called to do and really do.
do it in Jesus' name. For those of you that want to give, are we still offering the t-shirts or the t-shirts are gone? Do we have, what do you have for t-shirts? We just ordered a whole round of, we ordered more stickers and more. Okay, so, so if, yes. Yeah, all right, yeah. If you want to give today, we everybody's like asking yeah. about the t-shirts, the, um, yep, the first 20 people that give today. Yeah will receive a, uh, a t-shirt, and you can post up that picture if you have it. It's the t-shirt of uh, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown's mugshot. What we should do is start collecting everybody else who's who sent in their picture of them wearing it. There was a pastor that was preaching on Sunday. Oh, I've got like a ton of them. People have tagged me in a couple of them. You have to share those. Yep. So if you've got your t-shirt, share them. Tag us, Revival Today, or a dollar shuttles worth, whatever you got. Direct message would be best. Direct message? Yeah, so that there's not, like, text over it. Oh, yes. Direct message. Direct message them to Revival Today, and you will get that T-shirt. So the first 20 people that um, give, and if you are giving by mail, then I need you to call in and say, hey, I'm giving um, a gift by mail. Put me down as one of those first 20 people. You can give on our website, revivaltoday.com forward slash give. You can call 412-446-2332. Or you can do hashtag donate like Caitlin um, has done. McNeil, I know you. You're married to Taylor. How's your baby daughter? She's mad cute. Um, so you can follow suit with what she's doing or you can do super chat, which I greatly discourage because I think like I think they take 30 percent. They take 30 percent. It's ridiculous. So just you go to revivaltoday.com if you're going to give. We also do cash app, but I don't know um, if you know that that we can't get any information. So if you give on cash app, you're fat out of luck if you don't call us and let us know what it is that you want because there's no way of us getting any kind of information except for your cash. So we thank you for it. No, Caitlin, we will not be having an internship in the fall. We typically just do a summer internship just out of ease. <gasps> you got a little baby boy now? <laughs> I bet you he's mad cute. Does he have blue eyes? Uh huh. Just offer a code. Yeah. If you're going to use cash, oh, please right. make sure to go get. Claim your offer. Mm. Actually, everyone claim your offer. It's claim your offer. It's a thing to do. Okay? It's good. It's claim a good habit. If you are donating and you want a t-shirt, if you're, you fall into that, the first 20 people who give. Yeah. You can and mind you, offer. if you call this place uh, out here and say, I gave $15 and I want three t-shirts, that ain't going to happen. It's one per giver. Also, tell us what size you are. Yeah. Or are you going to get XXL? That's it. Or X3. Hmm? Or, or an XS. Who knows? Or an extra small. You got those in store? Cause I... No. Okay. No? <laughs> <laughs> well, Jonathan's going to be back here in about an hour, 3 o'clock, right? Or something like that. 3-ish. Three 3-ish. Uh, three yeah. And uh, we love you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining us. Share this broadcast. Love you. Mean it. Bye. The power of God is for you to be blessed, then to take dominion over the earth and be a blessing to your Alexa, play Revival Today Radio. You are now listening to Revival Today Radio. Give Jesus a great big hand clap all over the auditorium.